Joining me now to discuss this is Royal Commentator Kinsey Schofield. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Not having a very good year, Harry and Meghan, are they? 2023 is uh, an annus horribilis, as uh, the Queen famously described. Correct. You know, I hear in the States, the Hollywood Reporter saying that uh, Harry and Meghan are, are one of the biggest losers in Hollywood. But in this particular case, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's R12 Foundation only received donations from two people in 2022. That's what we're finding out from these uh, new tax documents. Financially, that was $11 million fewer than in 2021 when they received $13 million in donations from multiple donors. Um, you know, despite the lack are despite being founders of the uh, and directors of R12, we know that Meghan and Harry only work one day a week, which, you know, that could literally trans transition into just a Zoom call. That could just be a conference call in. Um, but what I do think is interesting is here in Los Angeles, there's a gossip site called TMZ, and they claim to be in contact with someone that has direct access to Harry and Meghan. And Harry and Meghan say that this these stories are blown out of proportion. Uh, they are not a corporation. You know, this is, the, the, so going into the red, that doesn't make sense to them. And they have big time money stashed away. To quote TMZ, Harry and Meghan have big time money stashed away. So they do chime in when they want um, the story corrected. Okay, well, let, let's hope they're right. Um, but the Hollywood reporter that you mentioned, oh my God, they, they didn't spare their feelings. Let's have a look quickly what they say. They described them as whingy, talking about both the Netflix and Harry's biography, The Spare. And they also said the Harry and Meghan brand swelled into a sanctimonious bubble that was popped by South Park. I mean, that is, that's vicious. I mean, I'm not saying I'm unhappy with it, but goodness me, that's <laughs> vicious. That shows how far their star has fallen, if people are saying that about them, doesn't it? Yeah, no, I, I agree with you, especially when, you know, these are the same publications that were so excited to see what they were capable of creating through Netflix and Spotify. I mean, Netflix has released a list of actual streaming numbers, which is wild. We rarely ever see that, never see that. And even in comparison to some of Netflix's other shows streaming hours wise, um, some of their bigger shows have, you know, 600,000 hours of streaming, where Harry and Meghan's docuseries had 60,000, over 60,000. So, you know, even their biggest hit is not necessarily a hit in comparison to some of Netflix's other content. Kenzie, do you know why that is? I, can t I know exactly why that is. Shall I tell you? Why? Tell it's because it's the reason why football grounds are bigger than churches because people prefer to be entertained than uh, preached to. That's why they've only got 60,000 hours <laughs> plus. Look, they haven't also, they've had a pretty terrible year. Let's just fuck about. They've lost their taxpayer funded house in the grounds of Windsor Castle, Frogmore Cottage. You're right, they've gone into the red with their Archwell, um, their Archwell Foundation, 536,000 uh, pound dollar loss. And also, they've had this Omid Scobie book, which I know uh, they claim they didn't collaborate with. But that seems to have opened up another massive rift with the remaining members of the British royal family. They, through that, through naming members of the royal family and alleging that they were uh, racist, who certainly as a massive royalist myself, I don't, I don't actually believe it, but that's what was alleged by Omid Scobie in his book. Um, They've become deeply unpopular in the UK. But it feels like, from what you're saying, and this, as I say, just vicious, vicious Hollywood reporter branding them as the biggest losers of the year, that the Americans have fallen out of love with them too. Yeah, and I, I do think that Americans love the British royal family, so we do not appreciate how Harry and Meghan have just kind of fixated all of their energy on taking them down. It, you know, it's not a good look. It just seems that nothing they did after leaving the British royal family felt like, uh, had, uh, as Harry described it, I just need to survive to pay this for security for my children. Uh, they they had they made so many um, errors in their professional and you know in their professional life since when you know uh, Netflix killed Pearl. Why did Meghan not take that 
idea she had for a series and bring it over to Spotify. Spotify drops her because she's not making enough content, you know? So they just have made so many errors professionally where they do look like what Spotify said, lazy grifters. Why yeah. is the um, obvious option when you're dropped by Spotify to, you know, stay at Spotify and offer the audience you've developed there that they can continue to listen to your content, but they have to pay you $5 a month. They're now it's going to be subscription based. You know, it's just that they they miss they make so many missteps and they Americans we're very hard working and they do look so entitled and lazy to us. Wow. Wow. Well, you said it. Look, on their Netflix, they're actually 211th in that list. Look, finally, we have seen uh, members of the British royal family go up and down in terms of their popularity. I'm sure if the British public here thought back, they can remember a time where our Queen, Queen Camilla, was not that popular and she rebuilt, has rebuilt her, um, her reputation in an extraordinary way. She's now loved in all opinion polls by the British people, not least by me. I'm one of her biggest fans. Can you see a way for Harry and Meghan to turn this round and build themselves back up, both here in the UK and more importantly, I think, for them in the United States of America? I don't because I think that I don't think that I think that they're kind of very resentful people in it. And until they get the, their own chips off their shoulders, I don't think that there's going to be any way for them to be welcomed back by the public. They've got a lot of healing to do. And unfortunately, they've been doing it on a public stage and they need to do it behind closed doors. Thank you, Kinsey Schofield, Royal Commentator. Thanks for joining us.